Hey everyone, on December 6, 2023, Google introduced something called the Gemini Pro, marking a significant moment in the tech world. Just last December, Google faced a major challenge, and we all know the reasons behind it. Up until now, Google dominated the search market with a 91% share and 4.2 billion users. However, OpenAI's entry disrupted the entire search engine market. Many argue that ChatGPT with only 180 million users is 23 times smaller than Google. So why is Google concerned? Well, ChatGPT happens to be the fastest growing internet consumer business in history. Looking at this chart, it took Instagram 2.5 years to reach 100 million users. TikTok took about nine months, but ChatGPT achieved 1 million users in just five days and reached 100 million users in only 60 days. So if ChatGPT keeps growing, reaching 1 billion users next year, it could take away 25% of Google's market share. OpenAI is backed by Microsoft, a powerful company known for being tough in business. This is why when Google struggled, its stock price dropped by 10% in a week, losing 1 billion in value. Now Google has introduced three new AI tie products, Gemini Nano, Gemini Pro, and Gemini Ultra. These innovations aim to compete with ChatGPT, and the stock market reacted strongly. Alphabet's stock price went up by 5%, gaining $80 billion in a single day. So the big question is, what's the story behind the AI battle between Google and Microsoft? What makes Gemini Nano Pro and Ultra the ChatGP killers in the market? And what's the technical difference between Google and ChatGPT? As business students, what can we learn from this tech war between Google and Microsoft? Let's break it down from the start and figure out why this AI war is so crucial for both Google and Microsoft. If we check Google's revenue breakdown in 2022, 10.5% came from YouTube ads, 11.7% from Google network ads, and a whopping 58.1% came from Google search ads. That means out of 80% of its ad revenue, 58% solely came from search ads. Considering Google dominates the search market with an incredible 91.85% market share, no other player even comes close. That's how vital searching is for Google. Now, let's shift our focus to Microsoft, a remarkable company with money coming in from various places. If you check out this chart, Microsoft's major revenue sources include cloud services, MS Office, Windows, and even gaming plays a significant role. Microsoft has wisely spread its income across different areas, not putting everything in one basket. Keep this in mind because we'll refer to this chart later. If this is crystal clear, let's delve into the war between Google and Microsoft. This story begins in 2014 when Google made a significant move in the AI world by acquiring a company named DeepMind for $500 million. As of 2021, Google had the highest number of research papers on AI, however, in 2019, Microsoft decided to up its game. They allocated a massive budget of $1 billion to strike a smart deal with an AI company called OpenAI. So let's talk about this deal. OpenAI and Microsoft teamed up in a way that allowed OpenAI to use Microsoft's cloud infrastructure, and in return, Microsoft got to use OpenAI's technology to make money. This marked the beginning of the AI war, with both Google and Microsoft diving into the AI revolution. As we all witnessed in November 2022, something incredible happened when OpenAI launched ChatGPT. Now, here's the question. Despite Google heavily investing in AI, why didn't they release their own version of ChatGPT before OpenAI? Well, it turns out Google's engineers did create a chatbot like ChatGPT two years before ChatGPT was launched. However, Google chose not to release it due to concerns about safety issues. This is the tale of Google's unreleased chatbot, and in the business world, this decision now appears to be a significant mistake. A blunder that raises questions about Google's competence. To add to it, Microsoft did something groundbreaking by combining Bing with ChatGPT. And here's where the virtue cycle of generative AI plus search engine kicks in. What does this cycle say? It tells us that the more data the AI can search and respond to, the broader its usage can be. This expanded usage brings in a wide range of users, so the more users the platform attracts, the more data it gathers, and more data means the AI can learn more efficiently and rapidly. 
In this way, its usefulness keeps increasing, attracting even more categories of users. Every day, ChatGPT is becoming smarter just like Google improved with search as more people used it. With this powerful combination, Microsoft is challenging the very existence of Google because this cycle is one of the most significant barriers to entry in this business. That's why these matters. When ChatGPT started getting popular, Google went into high alert. Suddenly, everyone at Google began working on AI because their $160 billion search engine business was at risk. That's why Google hurried to launch their own AI, called Google Bard. Now here's the surprising part. Bard turned out to be so bad that in just one day, Google lost a whopping $100 billion in share value, and its stock went down by 11%. Google didn't give up. On December 6, 2023, Google introduced something called Gemini, which is now being called the ChatGPT killer in the market. And as soon as this ChatGPT killer was announced by Google, things got interesting. Google's stock price went up by 5%, adding $8 billion to its market value. Now, let's dig into what makes Gemini so special. What are its superpowers and why is it called the ChatGPT killer? To get this, we need to understand the difference between a natively multimodal system and just a multimodal system. I know it might sound a bit complicated, but don't worry. I'll break it down so even a 17-year-old can grasp it. Let's use the analogy of a smartphone and a camera. A smartphone is designed to do various things like making calls, taking photos, sending texts, browsing the internet, and running apps by default. All these functions are integrated into the fundamental design of the smartphone, handling multiple tasks seamlessly. Now, imagine Canon deciding to add a communication feature to its traditional camera. Traditional Canon cameras were primarily designed for taking photos. Imagine if developers added features to a Canon camera, like making calls and sending messages. Would it suddenly be as amazing as the original smartphone? Probably not, because the Canon camera was initially meant for photography, so the added communication features might not be as seamless or integrated as they are in a smartphone. Similarly, if we compare a natively multimodal system to a just multimodal system, it's like comparing a smartphone to a traditional camera. A natively multimodal system, like the smartphone, is built to handle various types of data, text, images, sound, and even videos from the start. On the other hand, a just multimodal system, like the traditional camera, is originally designed for a single data set such as text, but has different integrations added to it, like image and sound processing. So Google Gemini is natively multimodal, like our smartphone, while ChatGPT is just multimodal, like our Canon camera with an added calling feature. So Google's superpower with Gemini lies in its design. Gemini is built right from the start to handle images, sound, and text. On the other hand, ChatGP was initially created only for text and then additional features from DALL-A and other plugins were added later. This is why it's more likely that Gemini will outperform chat GPT in the long run. Google's AI models, including Gemini, can learn and evolve much quicker and better compared to chat GPT. Another advantage Gemini holds is a massive amount of data from Google. Unlike startups like OpenAI, which rely on public data sources with potential legal complexities, Google has its own data sets from YouTube, Google Books, and even Google's Corner. This allows them to train their AI models without running into legal issues over using copyrighted material. Moreover, Gemini's training isn't limited to just English text. It includes a variety of languages, mathematics, and even scientific papers. This diverse training data gives Gemini a unique advantage in terms of both diversity and depth of knowledge compared to OpenAI. And here's a surprising fact. While we were all enjoying ChatGPT, Google quietly changed its privacy policy, and hidden in the fine print is a line that will blow your mind. We might not know much about it, but we all agreed to it. Google's privacy policy states that they use information to improve their services and develop new products, features, and technologies that benefit users and the public. For instance, publicly available information is used to train Google's AI models, leading to products like Google Translate, Bard, and Cloud AI capabilities. 
In simple terms, Google has almost the entire web at its disposal, and Gemini can access an incredibly vast and diverse pool of information beyond the reach of its competitors. Going deeper, there's a particular benchmark that stands out, the Multitask Language Understanding Benchmark. This challenging test covered 57 different subjects like law and biology, evaluating how well the AI understands and reasons about complex topics. Gemini Ultra scored an impressive 90.4%, even higher than human experts standing at 89.8%. This high score shows that Gemini Ultra not only understands a lot of information, but can also think through problems and comprehend even better than human. However, this doesn't mean OpenAI has lost the battle. If you look at these comparisons, Google is beating OpenAI by a small margin, and OpenAI is soon coming out with GPT-5, which is expected to be both spectacular and amazing. This highlights how closely matched the current AI war is. Going back to our chart, you can see how powerful Microsoft is at the moment. While Google's main source of income is being questioned, for Microsoft, capturing the search market is just another diversification segment. Even if Microsoft doesn't succeed in capturing the search market, it's still okay. But if they win this war, Microsoft will end up dominating a monopoly market, becoming the most powerful tech company in internet history. Please make sure to hit the like button to make YouTube happy. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.